Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we'll be covering metal builds, multiple drills, a duck. I found a cool space pilot, and of course, rounding out by answering some of your comments and questions in the feedback section. As always, if you ever want to introduce a future installment of TV3, you can do so by sending in your video clip over to my email address over at typev3 at gmail.com. First up in the news comes from the world of transforming robots, specifically the movie Transformers franchise, and it's the next in their masterpiece series, that being the MPM-05 Barricade. Now, these are not official images. These are still more along the lines of planned documents for this figure. I think these images are definitely something that you shouldn't take too seriously. They're just mock-ups. They're not really indicative of the final product. But I'm putting this in here because for a while, it was tough to say whether or not this figure was still happening or if it was still real. And this is kind of like confirmation that Barricade is happening. And I love Barricade, probably my favorite Transformer in the movie, in the movie universe. So I can't wait to see this thing come to life. I specifically am in love with the Mustang police car. I've always loved that ever since 2007. And yeah, I'm just excited to see more of this figure hurry up and give it to me now next up comes from bandai and over the past couple of months they've been showing off their sh figure arts kingdom hearts figures and we know all the details about sora but donald and goofy were still a bit of a mystery well now we have the first bit of news from donald and he is coming out in march of 2018 for a retail price of 4,200 yen, and he's looking, well, he looks like Donald Duck from Kingdom Hearts. He's got the mage stick, and, well, the thing about this figure is it's gonna, it looks small, and just going by these official images, it doesn't look like he has a lot of, let's say, posability options. I mean, it's down to his design, but you just look at his feet, and he probably has one ball hinge knee going on there, so... My expectations for this figure aren't exactly super high, but in terms of looking like Donald Duck from Kingdom Hearts, I mean, he's definitely there. Next up is Good Smile Company, and they're showing off the next entry into their Yu-Gi-Oh! series of Figmas, and that is, of course, the main rival, Seto Kaiba. Now, Seto Kaiba made a huge impression on me as a kid. From the moment he ripped up that fourth Blue Eyes White Dragon card, I knew I was in love. And I can't wait for this figure because I think it looks awesome. Just like the Yugi figure, he's going to come with the dual disc. He's going to come with a set of cards and his costume looks fantastic. I don't really expect too much in the way of articulation in the waist down just because his jacket for as angular and cool as it looks, it's definitely going to limit his legs. He comes with a suitcase as well and an extra face for Yugi, I believe. The other thing he comes with is an enemy controller, but this is for the Good Smile online shop exclusive. So it's one of those exclusives that is super cool because it's original. However, it's not something that I'm particularly interested in all too much. But if you want it, it's there and it's available for you. But yes, Seto Kaiba, super awesome figure. Glad to see he's coming out. And with this and Yugi, I think I'm done with the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Moving on, we've got news from Metal Build, and Metal Build have finally shown off the full details of their Arbalest from Full Metal Panic, and boy does this toy look great. I love the Arbalest. You should too. I've always liked it because it was very simple and very streamlined. It reminded me across of a, like if Exia and Master Chief were to have a baby, that's what the Arbalest looks like to me. The figure looks like it's going to fall in the footsteps of preceding release, which is the Lavatane. In terms of its engineering, it looks like it does a lot of the same things. It's going to have swap up parts for the shoulders as well as the back piece. Uh, extra support arms are going to open up inside the the torso area. There's a cockpit. It's going to come with a ton of accessories. And it's going to come with the exact same display slash hanger base, in, including the unpainted pilots. Now, that's the thing that I didn't like about the Lavate and the unpainted pilots, but... I suppose I can't really complain too much. I mean, you get a lot of stuff in this set. Now, the thing about this toy is the price. I know that figures have gone up across the board a little bit in price over the past couple of years, and the Arbalest is no exception. It's going to cost around 22,000, 23,000 yen. So that's yeah, a lot of money, especially for a simplified metal build. But I suppose the price is sort of justified by all the extras you are getting with this set. Is this a metal build that I think is going to be super popular? Definitely not. I mean, it's not a Gundam, first of all. And generally, 
the non Gundam metal builds tend to shell form. So if this is something you're interested in, I wouldn't panic too much if you didn't catch a pre-order because chances are, just like the Lavatane, it's going to just, well, be heavily discounted within a couple months of its release. At least, that's what I'm hoping for. On the other hand, there was another metal build that was teased out, and this one I have no doubt in my mind will sell like hotcakes. In fact, I bet the pre-orders are sold out even before the pre-orders go up. You know why? Because it's the metal build Astrea F-Type. All we have is this one sort of animated image. It's not even an image of the actual product, but it's just telling you that, hey, come November 15th at, I believe, Tamashii Nations, we will be able to see the metal build Gundam Astrea Type F. Now, I don't know what else there is to say. It's essentially a red Exia. What's there not to love? And our last piece of news is something that touches my heart very dearly, and that is because Bandai have announced they are reissuing the Super Robot Shogokin Gurren Lagann in a special metallic colorway for the 10th anniversary of the series. And boy, does this look fantastic. It's just a beautiful colorway on a figure that I thought was pretty great. Now, I will say, for those of you who didn't like the original SRC Gurren Lagann because you didn't like the wild proportions that it adopted or the, let's say, unpopular logos used on the shoulder pads, this figure will not address those issues. This figure is essentially just a metallic color scheme of the original release, and that's it. Also, for those with more of an eagle eye, you'll notice that this set is basically the original SRC Gurren Lagann with only the big drill from the drill set of Manly in this set. So if you wanted all those tiny little drills that you could plug onto the figure, this set will not include that. I will say the set is kind of expensive. It is about 1100 yen for a P Bandai exclusive. And yeah, that's more than I would like to pay for it. But at the same time, it's the 10th anniversary, special colorway. I suppose it's somewhat justified. My only downside is that if Bandai is doing this for the 10th anniversary celebration of Gurren Lagann, I suppose that kind of rules out a Soul of Chagokin version of the character, and that's, well, that's a bummer. I suppose I'll just have to deal with this for now and, and be thankful that someone is still putting out GL figures. So this week is a little slow on the toy front. There was nothing I was particularly hunting down, and I'm still waiting for a couple packages in the mail, but I did find something at my local Toys R Us that I've been wanting, and that is, this is the Star Wars The Black Series six inch Hera Syndulla. Hera is of course the pilot of the ghost from Star Wars Rebels, and also my favorite character from the show, and that is why I had to buy her even at the gross, gross price of 30 Canadian dollars. I mean, that's a complete ripoff if you ask me. I mean, this is a six inch action figure. 30 bucks is too much to pay for these things up here, but uh, I saw it on the shelf and I just had to have it. I haven't opened it yet. I don't expect I'll be super enamored with it, but I mean, just having a cool hair action figure is something I've wanted ever since Rebels started airing and it's here. So, eh, I'm pretty happy, I guess. <laughs> All right, we've reached my favorite part of the show, the feedback section, where you guys ask me questions and I give you answers. First one comes from Kazuki Soji, and he wants to know your favorite podcasts to listen to while building kits, stuff, or cycling. Most of the podcasts I listen to are video game related, and that's mostly just because video games were the first thing I, I suppose, uh, listened to podcasts about way back when. It started when I listened to One Up Yours back in the EGM days, but uh, slowly that's evolved into to new people. So lately I listen to the Giant Bombcast as well as the Giant Beast cast. Um, I would say that the Beast cast is probably my favorite of the two. The Bombcast was fun, but I don't know. In, in more recent years, the Bombcast has become this sort of like cynical, hateful place where I just don't care about half the opinions they spew out anymore. Whereas the Beast cast is tons of fun. I love Vinny. Vinny's the best part of that show. Another thing I listen to is just a short little sci-fi slash comedy show called We Have Concerns. It's basically just 20 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they give you a topic that's going on and some humorous commentary that surrounds it. So I thought that's pretty cool. And then finally, just a couple toy shows here and then. There's nothing I'm really dedicated to. I just more or less hear that you know, that, that, let's say podcast A is talking about this toy. So I'll, I'll tune in to listen, but I won't regularly follow it. So all the big 
podcast, toy show podcasts, I'm generally in and out between those ones. I know you're not a fan of the Strike Freedom Gundam, but can you do a TV3 toy show of the Metal Robot Damashi Strike Freedom Gundam? Because I really want to see what people think. Right, so the Metal Robot Damashi Strike Freedom. Well, I think this toy looks pretty cool. But at the same time, it just looks like a smaller version of the full-sized metal build. And I think that's why I don't have any interest in it. Because if I were to get one of these, I would just get the full-sized one. I think one of the things that I that could be cool with the Metal Robot Damashi line is that they can do other robots that have not been done or other Gundams that have not been done in the full-size metal build. I mean, I think that Metal Robot Damashi really excels when they are doing just the really, really big elaborate Gundams in the size. You know, they did the EXS, they did the the High New, but the Strike, the Strike Freedom is just like, ah, it's the Strike Freedom again. And it's definitely the one that's always going to play second fiddle to the full size metal build. And I think that's the only reason I ignored it. But I mean, if this is something you're into, then hey, more power to you. How about Ruby? Do you watch it? I don't watch Ruby, but I used to be a big follower of Monty Ohm stuff back when he was just, I believe, doing those videos single handedly. He did um, he did the Metroid versus Halo one. He did the Dead Fantasy series. But I don't know, ever since he started the Ruby thing or that group started the Ruby thing, I uh. I just had no interest. I don't know why. V3, what would you say is your favorite Gunpla kit that you've built this year? I would say that the real grade Unicorn Gundam is probably my favorite Gundam that I built this year. I mean, it's just fantastic. But you don't need me to tell you that. I think you all know that it's a great Gundam. And I wouldn't be surprised if that, you know, come towards the end of the year, a lot of people start saying that that ends up being their toy of the year, their model kit of the year, whatever. I mean, it is that good. Um, that said, I still want to build the Master Grade Double Zeta, and I want to see how, how that is. So, yeah, otherwise, real grade unicorn. It's pretty good. Type V3, can you speak Chinese? I can neither speak Cantonese or Mandarin, and honestly, I do not know why you would assume I could, because I'm not Chinese. I have a couple of Chinese friends, and they teach me words every now and then. However, I, uh, no, you drop me somewhere in China or Hong Kong, I would not last a day. I would probably get murdered. And finally, Jonathan Yo says, Type V3, what do you think of Celestial Beings, Shadow Team, Freshetti, and the upgraded versions of the second generation Gundams? Also, what do you think of the Gundam 00 Riser GN Condenser Type, and do you think it had a lot of potential despite having a twin condenser system? Sure. And there you have it, another episode of TV3 Over and Done With. As always, if there's anything this week that I missed or anything that you want me to elaborate on further, leave your comment in the comment section below. And before I go, a small little reminder that next week sees the return of the monthly show Toy Talk, where I get together with my friends Meads, Peter, and Gabe, and you know, we live stream a toy show, we talk about the things we've bought, things we're excited about, and interact with the audience who's there with us. So I hope to see you guys there. If not, see you in the next episode of TV3. Bye!